President Musharraf, when your mother decided that you should go in the army, how did you feel then? Did you did you want to join the army? Because you know you were <coughs> you were quite uh, you, you loved the outdoors and you had quite a personality. You were the naughty one amongst the brothers, and army is quite a strict institute. So mm -hmm. were you apprehensive? Ke ni yahan to bahut sakti hogi. No, 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 no. On the contrary, I I wanted to go to the army because in Turkey we had two defense attaches, uh, both from the army, mm. uh, one after the other. And they were both very smart and they used to wear those beautiful uniforms and mm. I was highly impressed that uh, I should wear such a uniform uh, one day. So one is that and the other is that uh, I did my FA, FSC from FC College and mm. uh, the I wasn't into studies, although I wasn't a dull person. Mm. I, just that I wasn't interested in uh, studies. Mm. So going to the PMA meant that your studies are over and you go to the, and go mm. to a profession not knowing mm. that there were far more studies involved in, uh, in the army than in civil life. Mm. Although there you were getting a return for whatever you did. If you achieved something for, after studying or, or uh, in, during courses and all that, you always got a return. Mm. Uh, so your, your career pattern was improving. So that was the incentive to, to study. So therefore I, and then uh, my interest in sports, mm. uh, extracurricular activities, outdoor activities was the best served in the army and I believe now with hindsight even, mm. I think uh, I have spent a most wonderful time uh, in the army. The army has given me everything, molded my personality, it has taken me everywhere, uh, every part of Pakistan and internationally. Uh, I've done courses abroad and uh, so the army has given me so much. I owe it to the army. Now, you know, the one thing that sticks out when one reads your book is the number of times you cheated death. It's so unusual. You didn't cheat death once. You didn't cheat death twice. You cheated death several times yeah. from the mango tree incident to yeah. you were you were you know you were supposed to be on the flight from Gilgit to Islamabad that yeah. crashed you were supposed to be on President Zia's plane that yeah. crashed yeah. your friend unfortunately died in a helicopter accident and you would have been in the helicopter yeah. if you were not traveling to play bridge and again the two assassination attempts in yeah. Pakistan what impact did those near-death experiences have on you yeah all this is correct and I am amazed myself and there are many others, there are about three other incidents. During the war, of known. course, there were incidents during the war. In the war, no, there were other incidents also. And when I was the president, and I know the, when I was traveling on the trade road, there was a car full of explosives. It didn't explode. We, later on, the car was found. It was on the trade road. It was supposed to have been exploded when I was crossing. Uh, then there was, mm. I went to, uh, to, in Bhavalpur, I went to my agricultural land, which the army gives mm. you. And later on, the ISI told me there was a woman who was supposed to approach me and uh, explode herself. Uh, so these things happened, and uh, I have uh, I am amazed myself. I am really amazed. I am, uh, but I've therefore I've started believing in destiny. Uh, uh, I have started believing that maybe there, there is destiny. There is a hand uh, you know, which is guiding you through through destiny. Uh, mm. I mean, the very fact that I'm uh, from a middle class uh, background and, uh, and uh, um, I have never approached anybody for anything for myself mm. in the army. I have been given the best appointments. I've been doing well and uh, I've been getting the best postings in the army. So there is a destiny which is maneuvering you around upwards or through problems. Mm. Uh, and I strongly believe, started believing in destiny, but negative, uh, or shall we say, yeah, negative, that I've become foolhardy. Uh, maybe now that I'm involved in politics mm. and when people ask me whether you'll go back, it's dangerous. I honestly feel I'm not scared. Uh, is that a problem? Is it good or bad? Uh, I am not scared. Uh, I Michel, should be scared. Do you feel you're invincible now? Because ek dafa dhachka lage and you're like, oh my God, I've missed death once. But with you, it's a regular pattern. It doesn't happen that yes. way. Miracles yeah. don't happen that many times. Yes. I have, as I said, uh, if it is my destiny to do something, uh, mm. 
So I take uh, this latest call as a call of destiny and if I uh, have to do something, if uh, God has willed it that way, I'll survive. If he has not, well, I've had it, uh, but I'm not scared of that. I've spent a good life. Hmm. I've seen everything in the world. So you feel <laughs> if the time is there to go, yeah. then if uh, if I can do for something for the for the country uh, after having got everything from the world, from from Pakistan, hmm. from the army, everything. What more does a want, uh, person want? So therefore, it's a time to maybe a time to return, time to do something mm. for the country beyond oneself. Now, President Musharraf, December 14th, 2003 and December 25th, 2003, two very serious um, assassinations, assassination attacks on yourself while you were still the president of Pakistan. Could you talk us through those attacks because they were very significant? Yes, the first one was a shocker because uh, before that, uh, I was following traffic rules. I used to, I never allowed anyone to break the traffic signal. Hmm. As the president traveling from Pindi to Islam, I always used to stop at red lights. No driver of mine would ever break that. But then when this first attack at the bridge, then everyone, actually the security people got after me. We are not going to allow you to do this. Uh, because your bulletproof Mercedes was airborne. Yes. it. Uh, was a very because I was I think uh, 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 they were late by maybe half a second or one second. Mm. They were late by one second because this uh, this bridge uh, actually it all caved in the whole breadth of it, mm. the road of the bridge, and there were iron girders out. Mm. Now if I was I had not crossed and I and we I used to frankly we used to travel very fast. Mm we would have got into the iron girders and down into the... Uh, so it was, uh, the man was one second late uh, and we, yes, it was... Uh, but I went home and uh, I came back to the site immediately to see what, what has happened. Mm. So everyone was shocked, what is the president doing? I said, yeah, show me what it is. What I found quite amazing was you did go back to see the bridge and following that, this was your first big assassination attempt in Pakistan. Yes. yes. You know, obviously, I know you have commando training, but still, you know, you do get a little shaken up when you've just missed death by a thread. It's literally, you were literally dead man walking when you missed that bridge. And then you decided to go to a wedding in Serena Hotel that evening yes. with your wife. Yes. In retrospect, uh, President Musharraf, do you think that was very brave of you or foolhardy? Why is it foolhardy? I mean, I mean, uh, if somebody attacked me, is, is the is it again an attack going to take place at the marriage place also? And this is where what is destiny. I mean, uh, frankly, I wasn't scared. But you know, no other happened, person would have happened, gone to so that it wedding. It doesn't mean that everywhere we are going to have these bomb blasts. Yeah. Uh, and after all, the security works and functions and. Uh, uh, there is never a hundred percent guarantee against. No security can give you a hundred percent guarantee of safety. Uh, but they do their best. They do try mm. their best. These people who are responsible for security, these policemen. Uh, I always feel so sorry for these uh, policemen who who guard you and uh, who get killed for you. Why should anyone die for you? One. Uh, one feels sorry. But President Musharraf, the attack that happened on the 25th of December, less than two weeks later, that was a very serious attack. Your Mercedes was uh, in a bad shape. You yes. had human flesh dangling from the remains of the car when you arrived back to your house. Mm -hmm. That was such a serious attack on you. Why was there such a big lapse in security? Because it, you just had an assassination attempt. One would have thought that this no, could have been avoided. No. 100% security is not there. In fact, at that time, this concept of suicide bombing uh, was not not prevalent, really. 
they were, I don't remember whether there were any suicide bombers before that. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe very, very few. Uh, I don't remember. We uh, the suicide bombing starts started with that. Uh, that a man uh, now nobody knew that a man is going to drive a vehicle and ram it into my car and. Uh, a lot of policemen died in himself. that one. Yes, there was a policeman right in the. There was a uh, partition, uh, the the crossing site hmm. opening from a petrol pump, and uh, I could remember when we were going. Uh, uh, there was a Suzuki pickup, which or oh, everyone was facing the other way, but was, was hmm. stopped. But this one Suzuki chap was in an oblique position trying to get into our side and a policeman so I did look and mm. then when I look front all hell was let loose and the man blew blew himself up uh, the, the vehicle mm. and that policeman that poor policeman uh, was blown up blown to pieces yet that was a more serious attempt uh, because immediately after the second one attack from the side mm. And there was a third one, uh, which would have been most dangerous, but again, destiny that he, he left the scene and went mm. off. And by that time, your car by was also time, in a very bad situation. we were traveling only about 10 miles per hour or whatever, uh, very slow, uh, because the tires had gone and uh, so that was very serious. You had a brave but driver? He was, yes, he was. Uh, he was brave and uh, there is a very thin line between cowardice and bravery. Uh, mm. I've always believed that. In such incidents where you face danger, mm. the first instinct is to is self-preservation. You want to run away, you want to duck down, you want to stop, you want to shriek. Uh, but I believe anyone who can, and this is very natural, mm. everyone has a scare. If anyone says that I'm not scared at all, is maybe telling a lie. Of uh, course. Everyone wants to preserve oneself. But if you can control your first urge hmm. uh, to duck down, to run away uh, for half a minute, I believe uh, for half a minute, you will overcome the scare and you become brave, you become bold. But if you give up to that first temptation, first impulse and you duck down, you run away, you're a coward. So uh, in this incident, uh, there is a shock, sudden shock, mm. and uh, but then if you control yourself, control that first emotion, you are in charge, uh, you are then calm. Then you can guide the driver, guide this man, do this, do that, you are you're calm. We hope you enjoyed our interview today with former President of Pakistan, General Parvez Musharraf. Please tune in next week to watch the second half of the interview.